in the WWE. Roman Reigns has gotten das boot. And there's a new tribal chief. But, 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 Blaisley, that was the right call on Sunday night. Not so fast. New facts, new details have emerged. And it's what BC said all along. Oh, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to get amplified on b b b b b b ray Dudley. Chances are, if you hear a, a horrible, just a just a really bad pro wrestling take, if you do your Steiner math, there's a good percentage that it's b b b b b ray that's giving that bad wrestling take. Oh, and he's got another shitty one that we are going to talk about, discuss, and get amplified over. Sometimes you gotta put bu- 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 bullies in their fucking place. BC will do just that coming up in this very amped up podcast. We're also going to discuss something that I wanted to talk about yesterday, but yesterday's amped up podcast was so stacked that even though I put this in the teaser, I forgot to talk about it. Brian Danielson taking a shot at WWE in their WrestleMania card on Dynamite. So we will discuss that. That created some buzz in the pro wrestling world. you damn right we're going to discuss that. Triple H. Paul 3H's Levesque. He is coming to SmackDown to spew some more BS. Because that's all that comes out of this dude's mouth. He's doing all the dirty work for VKM still. That has not changed. And he's still got his schnoz right up VKM's fucking ass. But he's coming back to do more damage control tonight. What more could he possibly say? You, us, them, the penguins, the pigeons, the fucking sharks. All of us together forever. We get it. We get it, dude. Please just go away. Fix everything that is broken. Stop trying to tell us it's going to be okay when we clearly see your company is imploding again imploding again started Sunday night Monday night was the nails in the fucking coffin and your your big plan like they always do their big plan is to just send out one of the McMahons slash Levex and just say everything's gonna be okay they, they did this before when we were we've had enough of all the bad television And we started getting really louder about it on social, showing up to the arenas. Finally, the whole family had to stand in the middle of the ring. You guys remember that? It was Shane, Stephanie, Paul 3Hs, Vince. And they all promised us, we hear you and everything's going to change. You guys remember when Vince had to step down because of the, uh, or or first of all, when, when the investigation started, Vince actually showed up on Raw and SmackDown just so we could see him. And know that everything is okay. It's business as usual. And then when he supposedly stepped down and retired, who came out? Stephanie. Two nights to tell everybody everything is okay. It's you, us, them, the fucking birds. Uh, the, 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 again, the sharks, the dolphins, we're all in this together. Forever, right? Stephanie tried to do the damage control. And then this happens on Sunday night in the debacle... <laughs> <laughs> with with that, and then you have Endeavor, who's taking over uh, WWE at 51% anyway, with that merger, and Paul Levesque has to come in and do damage control on Monday night. And then you have Monday Night Raw, the complete catastrophe that it was. So who's coming in to do more damage control for a second show in a row? Paul Levesque. Paul Levesque twice, and this is what they do. They put these little band-aids on. And then the, the, like the dollar store band-aids, you know, the ones that don't even stick on for more than an hour, more than a fucking hour. And it's already hanging off, right? It's the dollar store or the dollar general band-aids. And they don't, they don't give a, they don't know, they don't know what's happening in that own, in their own company. They're just going to try to relax us. As long as we don't make a scene, they can continue to get away with their BS, smoke and mirrors, Advertisers, everything's good, see? Our fans are just upset because they didn't get their way on Sunday night. No, it's much bigger than that, buddy. You're botching left and right with your entire shows now. Your company is imploding from the fans' perspective. You can make all the record revenue in the world, 
But if the fans have had enough, the fans have had enough. It's going to take more than you just showing up every show to tell us to calm down. Everything's going to be all right. We're going to talk all about it coming up. I also got AEW's rating for this past Wednesday night. You might be shocked by that with Tony's big announcement that he hit the million that he usually gets. We'll discuss all this and a hell of a lot more. It starts right now. There's only one thing left. Well, two things left to do. Number one, smash that up. Obviously, smash that up. Give it a crossroads or your fucking Superman, Superman punch, whatever you got to do. But smash that up. Help out the algorithm. The second thing you got to do is grab the beverage of your choice and down that shit. Because we bots to get amplified. Salud. Ah, yes. So first up on tap for today's Amped Up Podcast, Friday, April 7th, 2023, we have to talk about the big, big story, the big news in WWE. There is a new and new top guy in world wrestling entertainment. The tribal chief Roman Reigns has been booted. Roman has gotten DOS boot. Out of the top spot, new top guy in WWE is Cody, the American Nightmare, Rhodes. Now, if you don't like Cody Rhodes, but earmuffs, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you don't want to hear that news. Um, but that is uh, that is what we're hearing over the last 24 hours. BC has gotten a lot of info heading in. To WrestleMania. So going into Mania, Cody Rhodes was at a 2.7 advantage in merchandise sales. Now, 2.7 doesn't sound like a lot in most things, right? 2.7 of something, you, you, you squawk at that, right? You laugh at that. And merchandise, 2.7% advantage is massive, especially when you're, you're you just top the guy who's who's been champion for nearly three years, the only guy in the company that has been pushed to and through the moon in the tribal chief Roman Reigns. And this dude, this dude who was working for another company uh, over a year ago. This dude is an EVP for all elite wrestling. Gambles on himself, goes to WWE. A lot of people that, that don't, younger fans especially, that don't remember Stardust or, or Cody Rhodes from... His first stint in WWE. This is a brand new guy to them. And he captivated the imagination of everybody, man. And then, of course, that match where he wrestles Hell in a Cell with a fucking torn pec off the bone. Uh, but, 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 but he needs more uh, adversity, basically. Okay, that's that's what it is. Uh, we all remember that, and, and that's when people are like, all right, this dude is fucking, just, this dude's tough as rocks, man. He's just ready to rock out. He doesn't care if he's got fucking his bull pecs off the bone. He's fucking, he's fucking throwing, uh, he's throwing bows with his delts. He showed you, uh, he's not there to play around, man. He has a mission, and that is conquering the chief on the grandest stage of them all. And that story was just, man, it was one of the best in pro wrestling, man. His just his story was the story, right? And everybody bought into it. And before you knew it, guys, I was tracking the, I, I just made a vid about this a, a, a couple weeks ago. Um, I was tracking the monthlies for merch sales. Cody had shot up to two. <laughs> shot up to two. Sami Zayn should have easily had that with the momentum that he had, but Cody had done past him, and this was all without a title, nothing, man, being gone for months with that injury, that gruesome injury, and he shoots up to number two, and I'm thinking, damn, I mean, there's only been one person to actually top Roman Reigns. It was only for a short amount of time, but it was twice, and that was Bray Wyatt. And BC wasn't shocked. If you, I always tell you guys, if you look at the reaction, if you're ever there live, especially, take a moment to look around when Bray is coming out. You know he he was the guy for certain times. They just never went with it. 
Um, and then he just gets immediately like booked weird. And then Bray falls off the rails. That's been the constant. And I love Bray Wyatt. But he was the only guy to knock Roman off twice. Um, but it was very short-lived. With Cody, we, we were seeing this coming for a while. And all of a sudden, he takes over that two spot. And you're like, well, uh, I mean, coming out of Mania with the championship and all the momentum in the, the world riding so high. I mean, he could arguably become the top merch seller. You know, it's all it all just depends on WWE putting, uh, you know, giving him the ball and letting him score. If they create a new star finally, and, and, and it's not all just about Roman, then Cody has a chance to do that. We found out going into Mania that he had topped Roman Reigns at 2.7% is the number that I'm getting. And, and then at WrestleMania, he topped all merch charts. I think even uh, some sort, maybe it was uh, Sean Ross Sapp for Fightful um, has also confirmed that. Uh, but th there's been a couple of reputable sources that have confirmed the Mania merch sales, which Cody has topped them. Not hard to believe once you find out that he was going in as the top merch seller. So then he comes out of Mania as the top merch seller. Ticket sales for events with Cody Rhodes on it up 13% when he's on the card. So that's how you determine who the top guy is. You go by who's putting asses in seats and who's pushing the most merch. Who's pushing those t-shirts. Um, that's always been the adage in business, whether it's a Hulk Hogan, a Steve Austin. You want to see the Hulkamanias. You want to see the Austin 316 shirts. You want the metrics to be up double digit. When you're in a, ho a hometown of fans and you want them to flock to that arena, you want that to be in the double digits. Well, Cody's at 13% there. He's the highest merch seller. Roman Reigns has gotten DOS boot. Cody Rhodes is the new top guy in WWE. And I was told he needs more adversity, basically. He needs, he needs to struggle, basically. He needs a redemption story for it to work, Beasley. <laughs> Not so much. I, 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 <laughs> he never needed any of that. You just need to give him the ball and let him score, bro. Don't make him look like a fucking idiot. Don't. Don't. He just. <laughs> now we all have to. Now we all have to go through the summer for a redemption story. It, nothing makes sense. You, you know, Bubba, Bubba, Bully, Bubba Ray, Bully Ray puts this little fucking stupid, uh, th this was said to me by one of my boys, um, w w one of my, so I, I'll be transparent, one of my sources down in Florida, and he, <laughs> he always sends me some funny shit, and Bully Ray says, IWC over the past couple of days, and it has this, like, this y young girl just, like, tweaking out, and, and the caption says, I want it now, in other words, saying, like, fans are so impatient, right? Really, bully? Really, dude? B -b 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 Bubba? Really, man? We've almost three years for Roman. BC's been the biggest advocate of this guy holding the title for a long time. I love him smashing one dude after the other. Because you got to read the room and understand the story and get a good feel of where we are and where we're going. So, no, I never felt that Cesaro or Finn Balor or Drew McIntyre and everybody else that fell to the wayside, I never felt they were the one at the time or going forward. Absolutely. But we all, most of us with common sense and logic, were able to read the room, see the story and see the trajectory and know that Cody was the guy on Sunday night. <laughs> it's not just preference or our guy didn't lose. We're upset. It has nothing to do with patience, bully. We waited three years. If you're like BC, you love the title reign of Roman. But you knew that at Mania Sunday night, that was it. We can't do no more of this shit. The story is done. There's more story to tell, BC, we're being told. No, there's not. It's done. They showed you that on Monday. Now you can revisit it in a month after the Lesnar shit and Roman's back from his little vacay. You can try to revisit it and try to add layers. But it's okay to shut the fucking book and know that it, that book is done. The chapters are done. The book is done. Now you start new, fresh stories. It's okay. Paul Heyman said recently, uh, if Cody won the titles, that would have been it. 
There would have been no more story for Cody, and there's nowhere to go for Cody. Paul Heyman put that much little faith in stock in Cody Rhodes? You're acting like this dude is a fucking six-month uh, fucking rookie, six months into the game and doesn't know what he's doing. Cody Rhodes can carry storylines on his back. He's going to be phenomenal. He made everybody believe in this motherfucker, and that's with a bad injury that kept him out for months, and he's already top merchandise pusher, bringing asses to seats town after town, but he can't have a good storyline that doesn't involve Roman, or it's Roman's redemption to try to get his titles back? You can't do that shit, Paul? He had to lose Sunday night? Very odd by Mr. Heyman. But for Bubba, 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 who's got some of the fucking stupidest takes in the pro wrestling world. Always, when I see something stupid, I can put names in a hat, three or four, and one of them is always going to be Bubba. And this motherfucker, he's trying to make his out. IWC over the past couple days. Uh, I want it now. Motherfucker, what, what is the... Look at the alternative, Bubba. The alternative is Roman's going home. He'll be he'll show up a couple of times, try to pop a rating, uh, have a little friction with the Usos. We'll do that for another fucking year because they, they're going to sit on this for so long because they don't have any other fucking thing. They have nothing else. So we're going to sit on that. We're going to do some weird Cody versus Brock main event at Backlash, which Bubba doesn't make sense. Do you understand, Bubba? The, the, the word is that Brock and Cody was planned for a while now. Well, obviously, that's for Cody to get the title. Brock cannot take on Roman. So Brock was waiting for Roman to lose the title, and that's why he snapped on Cody. That's what makes sense. And then your main event at Backlash in Puerto Rico has a championship on the line. There's a reason. The Beast is after Cody. <laughs> it's Pro Wrestling 101. It's, it's not rocket science. And stories stem from that. You see what I'm... B- 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 Bubba, to, to, to want us to lower our, our standards and bring us down notches to your level of mediocrity is b- 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 befuddling to BC. It's befuddling. Raise your standards, b- Bubba. Can you do that shit? Raise your standards. You... And simple-minded dumb fucks are okay with a redemption storyline. We're going to talk all summer about a re- We're going to try to act like we're excited about a redemption storyline. Cody's got to go through so much adversity. Meanwhile, he's bringing more asses into seats than anyone else. He's got the fucking top merch of, uh, in all of pro wrestling. But, but, but he, needs to, he needs to prove that he's worth it all. You want us to fucking go through a redemption story to get to SummerSlam? I, I mean, that's not even guaranteed, by the way. Because we're raising such a fucking fuss over this stupid decision Sunday night, they're probably gonna do it. You want us to go to SummerSlam as a consolation prize. You want Cody to win at a reduced stage. Not the grandest stage, a reduced stage. Much less people, much less of a buzz, and much less care. Are you Bubba going to be front row going, Ah, oh, this is so fun at SummerSlam. I can't wait. This is the redemption. Oh, this place is going to go nuts when Cody wins it. No, there's going to be the majority of us like BC that is going to think this is an absolute consolation prize. We never needed a redemption story. We never needed to see this dude struggle more than he did. The story of Cody Rhodes writes itself. The fucking near three-year reign of reigns needed to fucking end Sunday night. Read the room, Bubba. Read the room. It was time, and I was the biggest advocate of a long title reign. I loved it up until Sunday. I don't want to. I mean, we're exhausted, Bubba. Don't you understand? We've had three years of it, bro. That's it. That's long-term storytelling. That doesn't mean five, ten years, bully. Cody Rhodes' story has been years in the making. Lightning in a bottle. Everything was perfect on Sunday. And you damn well know it, or you're really that stupid. You're literally a simple-minded dumb fuck. 
I don't care about your little podcast with the fucking uh, Donnie LaGrega and Denise Salcedo and uh, who the fuck else you got? Thomas Dreamer? I don't give a fuck. I'm here to tell you you're a simple-minded dumb fuck if you don't see that Sunday night had a bad ripple-down effect. That trickle-down effect. Shit goes downhill, and it affects everything. And now you have a fucking main event in Puerto Rico that doesn't make any fucking sense. That's the whole reason Brock would attack Cody. We'll find out something different. See, they're going to tell you a different story. Okay, then, then you admit it's a different story. Then put the title on fucking Cody. There's no continuing this fucking story. If, if, if you, Bubba, are, are willing to wait a whole fucking summer for a lame redemption story with clearly the top guy in WWE already, you just got to give him the fucking ball and admit it, but three H's is holding on to a fucking grudge because Cody put the, the sledgehammer to the throne in AEW and AEW ended up beating the shit out of Paul three H's Levesque and NXT. Booted them right over to Tuesday nights. And he didn't forget that. Roman Reigns defeated Triple H and Triple H at Mania. And Triple H was no way going to have Cody beat the guy who beat him. Paul Levesque is that petty. I've followed the motherfucker. I know this for factually. I can factually state that. He is that petty. And then you have a dude like Vincent Kennedy McMahon who just loves everything Roman Reigns. You put them together and we shouldn't be shocked that that last minute decision was made. And I say last minute decision because Brock and Cody were hearing anyway was planned for weeks. So if that was the plan for weeks... Obviously, they were trying to sew in the storyline that Brock was waiting for the title to change hands and whoever it was, Cody, he's going to attack them. But at the last fucking minute, they were like, we can't do Cody. We just, we just can't. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. My, my tribal chairman, right? That's Triple H. Always kissing Vince's ass. I don't blame you, my tribal chairman. Uh, I remember he put the, the, the sledgehammer to my throne in AEW before they whooped my ass. I don't think we should give it to Cody. I don't blame you. I love Roman. It's all got to be about Roman. So Vincent Kennedy, an ass kisser 10.0, three ages, they got together and they fucking called an audible, I believe, because everything afterwards that we saw on Monday night was supposed to be for the title at Backlash, because that's the only thing that makes sense with Brock and Cody. And then Roman gets to be as part-time as he wants and start his redemption story. I think you got it ass backwards. Most of us don't need to see Cody Rhodes struggle or go through adversity or have a redemption story just to get what he should have got Sunday. We don't have to wait three fucking months to get what we should have gotten Sunday on a bigger stage with a bigger pop and a, gr and a greater buzz. You you're reducing yourself to mediocrity. B -b 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 -b. Stop being mediocre. Raise your standards, bro. Read the room. Understand when something needs to happen, when you should have patience, and how it all is transpiring in front of you. If you saw Monday night, you knew that Sunday night was a botch. I mean, there's even people that thought it was the right decision Sunday night. And then they saw Monday and where WWE is going with everything. And they were like, oh, well, had I known that, that was the wrong call then, right? That's why there was so much outrage on Monday. Because all the people that were saying, oh, it's the right decision on Sunday. When Monday Night Raw was over, they were like, but this doesn't make sense then. And your only rebuttal is going to be, let it play out. There's more story to tell. No, there's not. There's literally not. They're good. You're going to see the same type of weird shit. They're going to try to put puzzle pieces where they don't even belong. And the puzzle is never going to be perfect. It's never going to be. <laughs> You're never going to accurately put the puzzle together if the pieces are in the wrong spots. And you can't force them somewhere. And, and, and the, if I just don't understand what other people are not understanding. This has nothing to do with patience. We've been patient for years, and if you're like BC, you're okay with the title reign. You loved it. 
This has everything to do with now we are doing a stupid thing and we have to wait for that stupid thing. Cody gets the belt, what, three months? And again, that's not even guaranteed, but he gets it three months later? When he's already the top guy, you just refuse to give him the fucking ball? And then we say stupid shit like he's going to be more epic by SummerSlam. Do you know what? This this is literally all on y'all then. Everybody that, that is keeping that energy, I want you to keep the same energy come this summer. You pay... You, hey, this is what you said, right? I don't want to hear any fucking complaining from all of you then who think that was right on Sunday and you still do. I don't want to hear any complaining about Vince McMahon. I don't want to hear any complaining about the shows. I don't want to hear any complaining about Roman Reigns or Champion being part-time or not showing up to the shows. I don't want to hear about how people are being booked fucking wrong. I don't want to hear anything about that. Because when it comes to the top of the line and that championship and Cody and Roman, you made your bed, now you lie in it. Everything that happens shitty going forward with that whole situation, remember, you're the ones that asked for it. You're the ones who patted Vince on the back. Good job, Vince. Great decision with the Roman call on Sunday. You did that. Don't backtrack now. And don't put just Triple H on a pedestal, right? I'm sick of that shit, too. Everything bad is Vince. Everything good is H. That's not true. H does a lot of shitty shit. And he's an enabler anyway. That's like if you open a business, a, a burger joint, to compete against McDonald's. You and your buddy, right? You open up a new uh, burger joint, right? Uh, dipshit and fuckwads, right? You got dipshit Dugenheimer and your fuckwad Fred. And you're side by side making burgers, right? There's two different sections. You got fucking dipshit Dugenheimer, your best friend, making burgers. You're fucking making your burgers on your side. You're making pristine burgers, man. People are pretty much loving it. You know, every once in a while, you have a dud. You overcook the burger. Okay. But next to you, your best buddy, dipshit Dugenheimer, he's pissing into fucking burgers. He's throwing burgers on the ground. He's stepping on it. Um, he's putting a, he's putting a little fucking, uh, there was a mosquito. Maybe there was a fucking roach underneath the tail. He's putting that on the burger as I, to make it extra crispy. And he's sending that shit out, right? He's pissing on the burgers and sending that out. And you're like, what the fuck? Well, wouldn't you say something? W wouldn't you make sure that that doesn't happen? And if it does keep happening, you're going to say something. Uh, you're going to walk the fuck out. I, I mean, you're, you're going to be done with business, right? You're not going to allow him to give people pissed roach burgers, no, you know what fucking H is doing? They're both making their fucking patties. Vince is doing his shit. He's doing his shit. Vince is doing, making all these fucking shitty calls, supposedly. And H is letting it all happen. He's watching Vince piss on the product. And H is like, yeah, good good job, my tribal chairman. Whoa, that was a long piss, my tribal chairman. That was three and a half minutes. That's what you're telling me. You're, Vince is supposedly destroying this shit, and H is just there for the run. Basically, what do you expect him to do, man? Exactly what Shane did three times. Exactly what fucking Stephanie did twice. Walk the fuck away. You're a multi-millionaire. Multi-millionaire, bro. I know people at their fucking McDonald's jobs that walked away from bosses that treated them unfairly, or they thought that the situation was... Not a good situation to be in at work. And they were making minimum wage, paycheck to paycheck. They left their job. They didn't have another job lined up. They were fucked. But they knew their moral compass. They had standards. Um, and they were not willing to go that low. And they walked away from minimum wage jobs. You think fucking I'm going to have sorrow? I'm going to feel bad for millionaires? And everybody gives Triple H a pass. Everything bad is Vince. Everything good is Triple H. No, at this point, from here on out, they're both equally to blame. I want you to understand that. They're both equally to blame at this point. If I see a shitty fucking product, I am blaming VKM and HHH. It's just the way it's got to be done. If you open up a burger joint with your best buddy, dipshit Dugenheimer, and you find out that people are complaining because there's roaches in the burger and there's mosquitoes in the burger and their burgers look like they've been thrown on the ground and stepped on or there's piss in the burger. You know who gets blamed? You too, because you are the owner. You are helping to run that fucking company. You can't just go, well, that was my partner. Well, did you know that it was that bad? 
Yeah, but, I mean, my side was good. No, it's not going to work anymore, three H's. Not on this channel anyway. So, bu 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 bubba this has nothing to do with patience. I want it now. And Bubba's going to be on a fucking high horse. Sometimes, Bubba, it's good to get off your fucking high horse, all right? Just see it for what it is. Take the fucking L. Cody is the face of the company, and he did it naturally. Naturally. Could you imagine if the machine got behind him? But no. We'll do the redemption shit. That way, Reigns is still the top guy in their eyes. He'll get the thousand days. He'll beat the fuck out of some more people. Not like there's anybody left anyway. He's already went through any everybody. That's another reason Sunday night was the night. But we don't want to believe that, right? So you'll go through the fucking summer, and we'll get the big moment possibly at SummerSlam. Possibly we'll get the big moment, and it will be about 20% of what it could have and should have been on Sunday. But we waited for it. We had patience and we saw adversity. Well, thank goodness we waited three more months for that shit. Thank goodness we had, you know, it's it's a shame that we have to fucking lower our standards to meet the fucking mindset of bu 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 bu. It's a shame that people like that need a redemption adversity storyline for Cody of all fucking people of all people this is what we're gonna do the redemption storyline this when it wasn't even needed it's fucking stupid and you're wasting my fucking time you know what that did Sunday night for a lot of us it killed our buzz for WWE it killed our buzz for pro wrestling for a while, didn't it? I'm still not fucking totally there. I was so pumped going in the mania, and a lot of you guys are telling me the same. It's kind of off. NXT pulls 555,000 viewers. AEW pulled in 877. That's with a big announcement. Usually that hits about a million when Tony Khan gives a big announcement. Wrestling has dropped off big coming out of WrestleMania. Uh, Monday Night Raw, you, the post-Mania edition only pulled a 2-2. I called that earlier in the day on Monday, b b on Tuesday before the rating came out. I said, I don't think it was a good show at all. I think the, the morale has been down for fans. I think they're not going to go more than 2-2 and only get 400000 as a peak post-Mania. And that's what they did, 1-8 to 2-2. And then you see NXT drop considerably. AEW couldn't even come close to 9 there were a couple tens of thousands away, 877. Pro wrestling took a fucking dip because it killed the fucking buzz. There's no excitement coming out of mania because we know deep down, even if you want to disagree or you think differently, you know that it was a botch on Sunday night. So you can, you can stay on your high horse, Bubba, and act like because you were in WWE, you know more than... BC's been in that fucking ring. I have friends that are traveling the world, busting their ass and putting their life on the line in those rings. I'm backstage at many events, buddy. You don't have any more fucking knowledge than a lot of us who have been in that business for a long time. And Bubba, it's okay to get off the fucking high horse. Sometimes it feels good to get, to just get the fuck off, right? We can all do it together, right? Let's all, on the count of three, let's all get out of our high, off our high horse. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that felt great. Isn't it great to get off your fucking high horse and just see things for what they are? B -b 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 Bubba. You wait three more months, Bubba, for redemption. You watch Cody get the shit kicked out of him by everybody. Judgment Day in the parking lot. Fucking uh, uh, Piper Niven or Braun Strowman will run him over with a monster truck. Um, one week, he'll get eaten by a fucking pack of hyenas. Another week, he'll be dropped off in the Atlantic Ocean by a helicopter and eaten by sharks. Um, maybe fucking uh, he loses to Omos a couple of times. Maybe he loses to Brock at uh, Backlash. Um, Roman will stay home. He'll come back once in a while to argue with Jey Uso. And, and you do that, bu 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 bu, because we're continuing the storyline. No, we're not. They have nothing. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't know. But you let them off the hook. I want to see how excited you are at SummerSlam to see what we all fucking could have gotten Sunday.
And then we're going to use wrestling terms like struggle, adversity, redemption, long-term storytelling. Right? You use your wrestling terminology to sound smart. Meanwhile, when, when three months from now, we're all going to be like, is it time yet? Is it time yet? And if he does win at SummerSlam, we're going to go, yay, all right. We've got it done three months later. All right. Did everybody get what they wanted? Did everybody get your struggle? Did everybody get their adversity? Did everybody get their fucking redemption storyline? Okay. Can we fucking move on finally? You fucking weirdos. <laughs> Raise your standards, man. Stop saying shit like redemption, struggle, adversity, like you know what you're talking about. There's certain times for that. This guy is the number one guy in WWE right now. He doesn't need all of that. That is clear. He's already got WWE by the fucking bulls. The only people that don't realize that is Vincent McMahon and Paul 3H's Levesque. I truly believe they don't want to give him the ultimate prize. It's bullshit. Congratulations to Cody Rhodes, man. Um, new top merchandise seller and over 13% up in ticket revenue when he is on this show. That is massive, bro. Bringing asses to the seats, selling the merch better than anybody in the company, better than anybody in the industry right now. Salute to Cody Rhodes. Even if you're not a Cody fan, you gotta, you, I mean, that's pretty remarkable, man. This guy gambled on himself, left AEW as an EVP. Goes to WWE, gets injured, fights, battles his ass off, adversity, and struggles his way to get back in time for the Rumble, and fucking uh, does everything he was asked to do with a guy who does not work. The guy, uh, this guy who's so part time and he's holding two titles, Roman Reigns, and Cody tried his best, and now he's got to do the same thing with Brock, another guy that doesn't like to show up to work. So Cody's got to once again put a story on his back. This guy is doing everything imaginable. And he is now the top guy. I cannot be more proud, happy um, for Cody. And and now we just wait three months. And, and unfortunately, it's not going to be the same feeling. But eh, we'll, we'll see what they do. You know what I mean? I, I don't even... It sucks. But... Bubba Bubba says it's the right call. Don't worry. Yeah. We saw the outrage after Monday Night Raw. We can tell that so far business is booming after Mania. Everybody is so happy. The morale for talent and fans is so good right now, Bubba. Yeah, right call, buddy. <laughs> so let's move on, guys. Let's go over to... um, um uh, well, Let's stick with WWE. Then we'll go AEW. The rating and uh, and Brian Danielson taking a shot over at WWE in the WrestleMania, which is odd to me. But we'll go over to AEW. But um, Triple H. Triple H is supposed to show up tonight. SmackDown. Tonight on SmackDown. Um, this is one of those things where... Uh, and by the way, guys, uh, I would like to tonight, for my channel members... I would like to tonight have a members only gold cards activated fully a members only live stream for SmackDown. BC will be live the entire two hours. I would like to. I'm about 90% sure that I can make it happen. I don't want to fully commit at 100%, but I would like to make that happen. Everybody can tune in. All my red team go. All of my red team, even if you're not a channel member. But when I say channel member, for the chat, it would only be channel members so I could see all the gold cards in the chat. And I know that they're all gold members just to get uh, kind of acquainted with the actual gold, gold card unit. So uh, I like to do those a couple of times a month. Uh, this just seems like a good, uh, a good time to do that because yeah, I was going to do a roll call at the end of this one. But I was like, well, why roll call? Let's just have a members only stream, man. So that's what I would like to do later tonight, guys. I just want to do a little programming alert there. That's BC's big announcement. <laughs> I gave a, a Tony Khan big announcement, right? <laughs> what, did it not live up to the hype? <laughs> BC's big announcement was a members only fucking live stream. Yeah, man. But if you guys want to tune in, even if you're not a channel member, tune in tonight if you want to uh, hear BC's live thoughts, live reaction. Live review of SmackDown. I hope to be live tonight. Everybody can tune in. 
but for the chat only channel members. I bring that up because uh, we're going into a SmackDown, uh, a big deal here that they're making. Uh, Triple H, Paul Levesque, is going to show up tonight, and WWE is advertising this, promoting this, as Triple H um, shows up on SmackDown to address the WWE universe. What do you mean you address the universe? You already did that on Monday, bro. There's nothing else you could say. We know that was damage control. We're not going anywhere. It's you, me, us, them, the penguins, the polar bears. Dipshit Dugenheimer, fuckwad Fred, BC's local pizza delivery guy, Luigi Lugnuts. It's all of us together forever. And it's like, what the fuck? You shut up. It's so weird. We're not going anywhere. Well, you are if Endeavor says so, motherfucker. <laughs> they got the 51%. Stop acting like you would control. <laughs> Uh, but but they would you know they, they do this all the time every time there's a big controversy Stephanie McMahon came out a couple of times you guys remember that when Vince resigned you guys remember that Stephanie had to come out a couple of shows and be like everything's good don't worry Stephanie did that you remember when there was the initial investigation Vince showed up twice Raw and Smackdown just to show up to show everybody that, no no don't worry guys nothing don't panic I'm here I'm here Vince showed up twice. Stephanie showed up when there was the actual, uh, <laughs> I retire, even though he didn't go anywhere. It was just smoke and mirrors, guys. It was just waiting for the dust to settle on the investigation. He never left. He was always the dude. He put a puppet regime in. But Stephanie went twice. You guys remember that? Um, when WWE, we, it was getting shit on like it is recently with the fire Vince trend. We, we hit a point where we were done creatively. Like the product got so bad that Stephanie, Vince, Shane, and three H's all stood in the middle of the ring and we're like, we hear you. We're going to make it better. So guys, I'm giving you m multiple, uh, fucking situations where once there was a little bit of uh, turmoil and we all were finding out about it behind the scenes. They usually have them show up a couple of shows and try to tell everyone, show everyone that it's okay, everything, don't panic, everything is the same, nothing's changing. They did it on Raw with uh, Triple H this past Monday, they did it again. And now it looks like they're going to do it again. Make everybody realize that everything's okay, nothing's changing, when they know damn well everything's about to change. BC's got a big podcast coming up, um, either this week, maybe tomorrow we can do it. Since I hope to do the SmackDown live review tonight, so that won't be tomorrow, because I'll be doing live tonight. So tomorrow, maybe I can put up another good, um, of course it's going to be good, it's an amped up podcast, but maybe I can put up uh, a special podcast tomorrow for the weekend, and I'll go over what I mean, but there's a big, big issue that the talent is about to face due to this whole Endeavor uh, buyout slash merger so, you know, you can try to, it's, it's all damage control, it's all smoke and mirrors with H showing up again tonight, and he's got this big announcement, I don't know, maybe he'll try to fucking uh, make announce for back, uh, a match or two for backlash, try to get the focus off of all the, the negativity, all the bullshit that's going on in WWE right now caused by them. And he's going to come out and spew some fucking shit, because that's all that comes out of Triple H's mouth, it's always bullshit. The biggest fucking ass kisser that Vince can have. It's not Brucey e. Pritchard. It's not even people power. Johnny Laurinaitis. It's not. It's it's Paul 3H's Levesque. He's already got that schnoz up Vince's fucking asshole. The second Vince wakes up in the morning. He doesn't even have to get out of bed. And that nose is right the fuck up his ass. That schnoz. So this dude's going to show up. And he's going to try to fucking, uh, he's going to try to like ease up the fire Vince hashtag. I don't know where they are tonight. I got to find out. But I wish it was a, a smarter crowd and that they would actually just fucking chant that nonstop. Hold up fucking signs. I wish they would fucking hijack the show and really send a message. And that message wouldn't just be for Vince. It would be for H to step the fuck up, find his balls, get his balls from fucking his wife's purse and fucking start speaking up. Or saying, I'm not going to be a part of this. People do it at McDonald's every day or at a fucking uh, minimum wage job. You could do it as a multi-millionaire. Have a fucking moral compass, man. Have some type of pride in you. So Paul Levesque will show up tonight with a big announcement. This fucking guy. Smoke and mirrors, guys. You see what's going on, man. Any other time, he won't show his face. 
But when there's fucking adversity and struggle within WWE behind the scenes and there's turmoil, oh yeah, now they're going to act like they care. We hear you. We see you. Don't worry, everybody. I'm in control. Who wants to play the game? Come on, bro. Nobody needs to see your fucking face spew more bullshit. That really worked out great for you on Monday night. That worked out fucking beautifully. The show fell off the fucking rails after you said, don't worry, everything's going to be the same. Well, yeah, absolute garbage. Right about that. We'll see what this dude has to say. We'll do it live, hopefully, as I said. Um, but H showing up tonight to spew more bullshit. It is all damage control, guys. Back for more bullshit. That's what BC says. He's back to spew more bullshit. That's tonight. Now, over on the AEW side of things, um, Brian Danielson. I had, I was going to talk about this yesterday. In fact, in my opener tease, I said I'm going to talk about this. And there was it was such a packed show. Yesterday's Amped Up podcast went about a buck and a half, hour and a half. There was so much we covered, like a dozen stories, that I actually just... It was totally accidentally. I skipped over the Brian Danielson uh, story a lot of people were buzzing about. And w what I'm talking about is on, on Dynamite, after the big um, combat club angle, where uh, Danielson is just ripping everybody apart, saying nobody is going to come out to help out Hangman after they beat the shit out of Hangman. Nobody can even hang with us. We're the best wrestlers in the world. Um, and, and then he says, in fact, from what I've seen, this is a quote, from what I've seen this week, we're the only good wrestlers in, um, in all of America or in all the country. We're the only good wrestlers from what I've seen this week. The way that he said that. And of course, he's talking about WrestleMania. We, I mean, <laughs> WrestleMania actually put out a lot of good matches. The reason we're speaking so negatively about it is because the bad taste le left in everybody's mouth, or most of us anyway, with the way that it ended. And it was not exciting, and it didn't make you think about the future. It didn't Nobody cared about a redemption. I'm not going to get into it again. But that's why we're not really speaking about how good Mania was. It should have been, though. Listen to the matches. I mean, watch the matches with Seth Rollins and Logan Paul, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair, Rey Mysterio and Dominic, Cody and Roman before the botched ending. I mean, these were all really good matches. KO and Sammy versus the Usos, night one's main event. I mean, I just listed five matches up front that were really fucking good. And it was just odd that he would say, Brian Daniel would say, in fact, from what I've seen this week, we're the only good wrestlers in the country. That was obviously a shot at WWE. And it was awkward. It was bizarre because he's never really one to really take shots at WWE like that. I shouldn't be too shocked, though. Because I had a feeling that if the Bella Twins, the Garcias, ever truly left WWE, the reins are off for Danielson. Bree always wanted Brian to work for WWE and always made sure that Brian Danielson was careful in his interviews and all of that. She said that many times before. She was kind of protective of that in case they want to go back. Um, but I always thought like when they leave, the, the gloves are kind of off, you know, and Danielson can say whatever he wants and just not have to worry about that. Because I also think that Danielson, knowing that Bree had that connection with WWE, didn't want to step on her toes and make things worse for her. And it's not a coincidence to BC that a couple weeks after the Bellas, the Garcias announced their departure from WWE officially, even under the weird little Legends deal they were on. Um, here's Danielson throwing that real first big shot at WWE coming off of Mania, where I know Danielson was watching and probably thinking, fuck, I would have loved to be having some of these fucking matches. Um, and, and then he, the first chance he gets on Dynamite after Mania, he delivers that line. It was just odd placement of it. You know, they busted their asses at Mania to say that line. Ah, oh, man, I was like, was that needed? Definitely not, bro. We didn't have to say that. That was a, I think that was an unnecessary... I, I'm okay with the little jabs. And if you want to jab WWE, do, do it up, bro. Odd timing, and I don't think the jab was necessary. I think I think he could have been a little... Taken a little bit more of a higher road on that. Danielson, of all people, I don't see him with that jab at that time. That WrestleMania WWE jab. I, I don't see that. And again, I reiterate, that was definitely a jab to WrestleMania WWE. <laughs> I mean, coming off the, the two-night fucking uh, 
a two night mega event like WrestleMania with all of the matches that we were buzzing about that were actually good. And then he's like, from what I've seen this week, we're the only good wrestlers in, in, in the whole country. And I'm like, whoa, bro. So, I, again, uh, I wanted to cover that yesterday because that was something that got a lot of fans buzzing. And that's usually what I like to discuss. So we can talk about it, but also see the, the, the fact, you know, put some facts to it. So we can all a little be a little bit more on the same page and not just fucking dispute one another and always disagree with one another. Not everything has to be a fucking argument or a disagreement or a dispute or a dilemma. Um, we don't always have to be confused or just have a... We, we can just come together based on like what we do know, right? Facts. So BC wanted to uh, discuss that yesterday. I wasn't able to do such because I just forgot. Man, I had so many stories in yesterday's podcast, guys. It was fucking rocking. Much love to you guys, man. We rocked yesterday out from Rick Roll. Everyone got Rick Rolled early in the morning yesterday. And then a few hours later, BC came with that Amped Up podcast. And thousands of you guys so far have enjoyed that. Um, fuck yeah, man. Awesome. And I want to end with the AEW um, rating. 877, in fact, um, let me make sure too, I got the demo for you guys because I want to get the point three zero in the demo, the all important 18 to 49 demo, guys. Um, 18 to 49 demo, point three zero. so, and 877 for the rating, 877,000, that is up, um, when they score 830 some odd before, 820 something. It's up about 40,000, I believe. So they did go up, um, but this is the lowest rating for any TK big announcement. Usually he pulls about a million. I mean, he gets a lot of people for announcements. It's his go-to. Whenever they go low, like last week, whatever it was, 828, 833, whatever the fuck it was, <laughs> um, he will come right back with a big announcement for the next show. And he's been pumping this up for the whole week. And usually that works. The, I mean, they'll pull over 100, 120,000 more viewers just on a big announcement. Happened last time. Um, he was in the middle of a bunch of 800,000 viewership shows. And then all of a sudden you see a weird million viewership. And it's like, okay, that fucking worked again, that motherfucker. But eventually you go to the well too many times. That, that, that well is going to run dry. And that's what happened. It's the boy that cried wolf. And I think what finally happened was fans said, no more. We're done with these big announcements, bro. It's nothing more than you can put in a press release. It's big for the company. We totally get it. But it's a press release. And then you can talk about it on your show. But to hype the fucking show around this big talking point, and it's something that should have been first sent out in a press release you're playing with fans at that point because they're expecting like a, a massive announcement that doesn't just affect you, Tony, and your company, but like the fans maybe on that night or, or, or so. It's, it, it's a tricky situation and the guy does it so many times and then, and then you see this week's rating at 877 and you're like, oh, fuck, it finally happened. Like fans are no longer buying the big announcement story anymore. And, uh, and, and I, I, th and I told you guys, it was only a matter of time. Like, I think that last time finally was it when he hyped that up so much. And then all of a sudden he says, yeah, we're going to have a reality show. <laughs> and we're like, wait, all of that was for total divas 2.0 or fucking total Bellas or a Rhodes on top, Miz and Mrs. Who the fuck cares about going behind the scenes with AEW? We, we get that all the time on this fucking platform with everything. Um, at, at this point, it, it's nauseating to go backstage with every little detail. And, and half of it's staged anyway. You guys know that. They're playing for the cameras, getting a good storyline together. You know, let's set, let's sit Sammy and, uh, and Eddie Kingston down together with two cameras in their face. Yeah, that's, come on. These are performers, bro. So, uh, I, I mean, people at that point were like, no. And sure enough, he tried to go back to it a few weeks later this past week in 877. They only went up a few tens of thousands. And guys, that's with the FTR career on the line, AEW career on the line, a championship main event. Jay White starts the fucking show. Jay White. So that makes people go to the show because they're hearing, oh shit, that's how they started. And then they'll, they'll be there for the rest of the show. So you think, right? 
Jay White starts the show, a championship main event with careers on the line. Um, a big announcement is pending that's going to change the company. That's what Tony said. And all of that pulled 877. Now, I am actually going to give a little bit of a mulligan to AEW here because I also think it was fan fatigue. Fans are so fucking just done with wrestling for a minute, right? Not not for good, but a lot of fans just need a fucking break because of what happened Sunday night. Like I told you earlier, it killed BC's buzz, bro. It just killed my buzz. I'm not even I'm not a super a Cody super fan or anything. It's just if you know what was sitting in their lap, lightning in a bottle, what should have happened, and then they just you end the night like that in the weekend. The buzz is just sucked out of you. And, and it, I can't describe it, but I know a lot of you guys felt the same way. It's kind of like, I'm just, I'm, I, I have no emotion to pro wrestling right now for a minute. You know, like nothing is telling me. It just drained us on Sunday night. It just fucking took it out of us. And I think you saw that in NXT with 555,000 for a damn good show from what I've seen and heard. The parts that I haven't seen from what I heard, damn good. And I got to see a lot of that show actually. Um, I thought it was a good damn show to pull 555. This, Jay White debuts, championship main event, careers on the line, a big announcement. Um, MJF doing his best to entertain and not just having to do fucking moves and sequences in a match. I thought that was actually good. And they only pulled 877. I think you're seeing a little fan fatigue right now and just people just being so fucking... Uh, just mind boggled by Sunday night's decision that just they checked out a wrestling for a minute because these two shows NXT and AEW was not that bad and actually good for a lot of them and it's post mania man you're still supposed to be feeling that buzz like we usually have right usually you end the weekend and everyone's buzzing everyone's still excited we're like oh what's going where you know and then coming off a of monday night i'm sure people just had enough as well not even just sunday night monday night raw probably put the nail in everyone's coffin if they were already feeling that fan fatigue and that the buzz was drained out of them monday night that solidified it with a cherry on top So I don't give mulligans, and I'm not here for NXT and AEW, but I think I, I do believe watching this product for as many years as I have and, and studying these trends and seeing, you know, following certain buzz, you know, I do believe that that had a big part to play in both. Um, and it's a shame for both NXT and AEW, um, for sure. Um, uh, update quick on Shane McMahon. Um, we do believe that he did. Um, I, I, I talked to, I have many friends uh, that, that are in the medical profession in every different aspect. Um, and, and they're all doctors, but they're all doctors of something different, if that makes it. Like you hear the term doctor and you just think it's like for everything, but you'd be surprised, man. There's doctorates in a lot of different areas. Um, and I asked uh, a few days ago, like, what's the, what's the protocol here? Like, like when you think like what's Shane doing right now, do you think with that type of an injury? And it was actually, it's a physical therapist that told me, um, they'll, he'll wait a few days and then he, so they'll schedule a surgery and he'll wait a few days. So probably, uh, she had thought Thursday, either Wednesday afternoonish or Thursday, which was yesterday. Uh, he would have the surgery. We're now hearing that it is believed that he did go down to the uh, Andrew Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Center uh, down in Alabama, I believe. Um, Birmingham, Alabama. Um, that's where all the uh, wrestlers, a, a lot of sports people go down there, even <laughs> non-sports. Stephanie McMahon was just there for her ankle injury um, because they just, I mean, that's how... Uh, Dr. James Andrews, man, that's how high this dude is on their list. Uh, they all swear by this dude and his team. So it's believed that uh, it's it, just like I was told a few days ago. It's believed that, yeah, either Wednesday or Thursday. I don't have an exact date, but it is being confirmed now that he did have that surgery just recently. So that coincides with what I heard Wednesday, Thursday. So surgery was done with the torn quad and his ACL was bu busted up, too, from what we hear. We don't know the extent of that. But the torn quad um, surgery was done for Shane McMahon. We hope 
nothing but the best for him, dude. And at this point, I always love seeing Shane. A lot of people are saying that's it. That was the, if that doesn't tell him to hang it up, I don't know what's going to. Either way, I can't wait to see him have his moment in the Hall of Fame. Much deserved. He has put his fucking body and life on the line for us more than most superstars, bro. He has given us some of the best highlights more than 90% of the wrestlers I've seen growing up. <laughs> so whether you love Shane or not, the fact that he didn't need to do any of this over his lifetime. And he just kept coming back for our entertainment to, to wrestle for his kids. You know what I mean? I mean, it was some of the most selfless type of shit I've ever seen from a dude who's a millionaire. He's got the wrestling world by the balls, knowing who his father is. And he just kept wanting to do more for us. He kept wanting to fucking up his standards and levels and do crazy shit. I just, even if you don't like Shane, you got to respect the dude. I mean, <laughs> he fucking... Oh, man, I don't know. The, the guy was always, everyone says like, oh, here comes Shane to take a spot from somebody. I was always looking at it like, no, here comes Shane to make things interesting. At a time for years where nobody was coming through that curtain and making BC feel something, like something's going to be exciting. When Shane would go through the curtain, at least I fucking felt like, okay, we're going to see some fun shit here. So all the best to Shane post surge and a speedy recovery, man. Whether he ever returns to the ring or not, um, much love and respect over to Shane McMahon. I think I'm going to end it there because we're approaching a, a full hour, if not plus, or about an hour. So I think I'm going to end it there with today's podcast, guys. Again, because tonight, I hope to anyway, be live, members only, during SmackDown. Only live review, live reaction, live critique. Live thoughts, live breakdown of SmackDown for April 7th. It uh, looks like a stacked card. Um, they're going to try to make us forget about all of this Vince McMahon shit, all this Sunday night botch and debacle, Monday night's catastrophe. They're going to make us forget about it with Paul 3H's Levesque. He's probably going to start the show. Let everyone know, calm down. We got a packed show. Um, Sami Zayn is taking on Jey Uso, I believe. Um, in the main event, you got a six-man fucking tag, I believe, featuring fucking Imperium and maybe Drew, Sheamus. I don't know. I think it was a six-man, wasn't it? Or is Rey Mysterio involved in that? And, and maybe it's LWO versus uh, Judgment Day? Uh, Damian Priest? I don't know. There's matches, all right? I just hope there's enough fucking storylines to make me give a fuck. Be patient, Beasley. Be patient, man. We're continuing epic storylines. All right. All right. Ball's in your court. I'll give this the benefit of the doubt for you. Let's see how it fucking turns out. From here on out, it's all those people that think this is all the right call and you're giving Vince a pat on the back or you're fucking saying, no, when it's good, BC, it's Triple H. When it's bad, it's Vince. Well, from here on out, it's both of them. Both of them. When it's bad, I'm blaming both. How's that? You can't watch your fucking partner piss in the burgers and, and give it to customers and just say, well, my burgers are good. No, you got to speak the fuck up and speak out and do something about it. Dude's pissing in your fucking burgers and these people's burgers. You're not going to say anything. You're not going to step up for them. You're not going to walk away. You're just going to let it happen. No, H is just as much as fucking blame. And I'm not going to believe any fucking bullshit he spews tonight. I'm going to be listening live. I'll give you my live reaction to three H's tonight. Hopefully. Amp unit. Salute. Top guy. I'm out. BC saying check. You think be live amped always. Gold team especially. All my red team. You can tune in tonight. Hopefully you will. Stop in. Smash that up. But gold team. I hope to see you up in that chat man. Activate those gold cards. Let's shoot the shit tonight. Let's rock out. Till then. BC saying check you. <laughs>